Today we're going to make a modular raised garden bed out of concrete. This geometry may look complex, but I only use three different pieces. Here is how I came up with the design. I made four circles, then I selected those all in Illustrator and rotated them 45 degrees. Then I created smaller circles inside of them and then filled in these new spaces until I created one piece that could establish the basic geometry. I like the idea of having a second tier that would create a deeper garden in the center, so I identified those pieces and then brought them over to Easel software. Easel is the software that Inventables makes and is one of the easier CNC softwares to use. I'll be making this design available, so be sure to check the link in the description box below. I loaded up some pieces of 3 quarter inch thick MDF onto my X-Carve Pro and started cutting them out. I really like the X-Carve Pro. It's robust enough to really serve as a workhorse, but it doesn't take up that much room in my shop, which is great because things are already a little bit cramped. This machine is a durable, dependable workhorse, and by the spoil board underneath, you can see that I've been using it quite a bit. The easel software automatically places tabs which keep your pieces in place. You can cut these quite easily using a Japanese handsaw, or if you're in a hurry, you can use a jigsaw. Now as you can see in addition to the pieces themselves, I also cut an outer ring around the big question mark shaped pieces. This is going to be helpful for making the molds later. I use my palm router with a flush trim bit to trim the tabs nice and flush. Don't have a palm router and you got a steady hand, you can do this with an orbital sander. I'm basically making a solid MDF version of what I want to end up as concrete. And so I just glued a bunch of these three quarter inch thick MDF pieces together. I started by gluing them up in pairs and then I glued those pairs together and drove in some finished screws. MDF is pretty smooth and the glue makes it real slippery. So I recommend pre-drilling your holes and using some clamps to keep everything aligned. In total, I went with six layers of three quarter inch MDF, so that brought me to a total height of four and a half inches. I'm using these outer rings of MDF to create the outside mold for when I pour in the silicone. And since I want a silicone bottom for the mold, I'm gonna to have to go a little bit higher than I did with the positive mold. For the second tier, I just went with four layers of three quarter inch MDF. Once the glue had fully cured, I just used my orbital sander to sand the outside edges nice and smooth. I started with 100 grit and worked my way up to 220. I used my palm router with a round over bit to round over all the edges. I'm going to use 5000 PSI concrete, which is quite strong, but sharp edges can easily chip. The finished screws that I used left some little divots, and I just filled those in with wood putty. I want these to be as smooth as possible, so I brushed on a thick coat of water-based polyurethane. When that first coat had fully cured, I lightly sanded it down with 300 grit sandpaper and then added on a second and final coat. The result is a smooth, hard, protective finish over the relatively soft MDF. Now I'm ready to make the silicone molds. I hot glued the positive piece down to a piece of melamine and then placed the ring around it and hot glued that down as well. I didn't CNC rings for the smaller pieces because I'm gonna cast both pieces at the same time. So I just cut some pieces of melamine and glued those around them. I used some silicone caulk to seal up all the edges. This is just to make sure none of the expensive liquid silicone seeps out. I've had the positive part of a mold float up when I poured silicone around it before, so I just clamped it in place and drove in a couple screws just to make sure everything was nice and secure. For reusable concrete molds, I really like Mold Star 30 from Smooth On. I've tried quite a few different products. This is a really easy one to mix, and I've been able to use molds made out of this for hundreds of concrete pours. I poured the silicone and let it sit overnight. Removing the MDF and melamine molds is pretty easy. You just strip away the hot glue and pry back the pieces. I had a little bit of trouble though with the MDF ring mold and that's just because I didn't really sand the inside of it very smooth. So I just had to use a saw to cut that into pieces and then pull the pieces off the silicone. 
I used my Japanese pole saw to do this. It has a really thin kerf, which means that I could hot glue this outer mold again if I wanted to make another silicone mold. I pulled out the MDF pieces and was finally ready to get to the concrete part. For concrete molds using Moldstar 30, I like vertical walls that are about half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. That's flexible enough that you can peel them away and remove the concrete, but they're still pretty sturdy. I'm using Quickcrete 5000 Concrete Mix. It has a really nice consistent gray color. At 5000 PSI, it's way stronger than typical 3000 PSI concrete, and it's readily available at most big box home improvement centers. I added water and mixed it until it was roughly the consistency of lumpy oatmeal and then started scooping it into the silicone molds. Once the molds were about a third of the way full, I used my Ryobi hammer drill in the hammer only mode to vibrate the melamine that the silicone was sitting on. This really helps settle the concrete and reduces the amount of bubbles you're going to get. For the taller question mark shape mold, I didn't want the edges to bow out from the weight of the concrete. So I just CNC an MDF ring that will hold them together nice and tight. I let the concrete cure for 24 hours before just popping them right out of the molds. They come out real smooth and no finishing is needed. I then rinsed off the molds and was ready to do the whole thing again. Now, if you don't have a hammer drill, you can use a jigsaw to vibrate the molds. Just be prepared to have a sacrificial blade because it's going to get pretty bent up. I did eight total pours and now I was ready to assemble the planter. Each of the question mark shape pieces weighs about 35 to 40 pounds. The smaller pieces just stack right on top. I'm just using that as a temporary installation so gravity is fine, but if you wanted it to be more solid and permanent, you could use Quickcrete anchoring epoxy to glue the pieces together. Out here in Joshua Tree, there's a layer of sand on top of the soil, so I just scoop that away before adding in potting soil and plants. This way the plant's roots can reach down through the sand layer and into the soil below. I really like this process of using a CNC to make positive prototypes that can then be used to make silicone molds that can be used to mass produce concrete modules. I just think it's a really cool way where a single person can do a really complex design in a bunch of small increments. Now granted, this design process takes a lot of patience, but it only takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to mix the concrete and fill up the molds and vibrate them. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other modular concrete videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Oh, and if you want to learn more about the concrete products that I use, be sure to go to quickcrete.com.